On this episode, we are going to have a look at the most unique phone in China. Smartisan is a newcomer to the ferocious Chinese phone industry, but it surely built up their reputation, the attention, or should I say, the obsession to details. So here is my hands-on review of their latest flagship, Smartisan M1. The M1 packs with a 5.15-inch 1080p IPS display with Gorilla 4 glass, and there's also a 5.7-inch 2K display on the larger version M1L. 2.35 GHz Snapdragon 821 processor with 4 GB of RAM, 32 GB of internal storage with no expandable memory, 3050 mAh battery, and NFC. You also find a 23 megapixel camera, f2.0 aperture using Sony's IMX318 sensor, which supports OIS and 240 FPS slow motion. Last but not least, they put many radios on the phone so you can use it across the globe. So hardware-wise, they really made it to the top this time. When it comes to design, I would say it's slided a bit from the previous model Smartisan T2. It still has 2.5D glass on the front, but the back of the phone is now made of plastic. So it looks more like a cheap plastic mid-range phone. So I would recommend you to go for the brown color, which has a leather back panel. And rumor has it there will be black color as well, but it's not available at the present. It still has two sets of rocker buttons, which can be customized to adjust the volume and the brightness, even to lock and wake up your phone. The power button on the other hand is removed, instead you have to press the home key for 3 seconds to turn on your device. The system UI is as unique as always. All the icons and quick control bar are well designed, the animation is fun, you can easily have an overview of all your apps by just swiping left. The home screen can be set to 9 grid or 16 grid, or you can go back to the original Android style where there's an app drawer. There's definitely much more to talk about, so I will make another video about the software. There are a few thoughtful details that I noticed so far. The USB Type-C cable glows in the dark so you can find it when there's no light. And the other side of the cable is also designed for you to plug in correctly without looking. There are also a few things that I'm not happy with. They still use the type of fingerprint that you have to press it down to unlock it every time. Symmetry is so important for them that they make the forehead of the phone relatively big. I also took some pictures to give you an idea of the quality. Anyhow, thanks you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.